Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Lancer Custom Works, where I will be discussing the various mech builds you could make and play with Lancer. So, Napoleon, is one of the toughest frames in the book. Yes, this angry midget is an extremely hard nut to crack because not only is it small and therefore can use practically everything as cover, it has two traits that basically do the same thing, be damn near invulnerable. Seriously, play Napoleon right, and you probably won't need to spend your precious repair cap at all. But, there's a limitation. Napoleon's core power, True Black Aegis, is very powerful for near perfect invulnerability, but at the same time very restrictive, as you can only use two things when it's active, shield, and kicking the shit out of people. And also some systems that don't require activation to work, which means quick or full action. Every single Napoleon build basically needs to think of something that works with Napoleon's core power, so the build will do well with the core power activated to eat every single incoming attack with impunity. Anyway, let's get onto the builds, of which there's 51 this time around and let's cut some of that out. First in the list is one spicy manlet, an Azura Displacer Napoleon. It works the same as any other Azura build, just activates Azura, barrage the Displacer plus Missile Rack plus the prototype weapon, then use Redundant System to stabilize as a quick, and fire everything again as skirmish with overcharge which is aided by heat fall coolant to keep overcharge cost low. The 16 heat cap is precisely needed for this combo due to how hot displacer is, superior by design helps in this by giving more heat cap and making this napoleon immune to impaired. Nuclear cavalier to take advantage of the heat, crack shot to make displacer even better, and grease monkey to make more charge for the limited system. And of course, it has stasis barrier and bolt, which are very helpful in protecting allies and work perfectly with true black aegis on. Also, fun interaction between stasis barrier and displacer, and most other kinds of walls. Stasis barrier has a 50% chance of eating any incoming attack as long as the target benefits from soft cover, but this won't work with area effect weapons like displacer because the attack originates from the center of the blast. Basically, stasis barrier works perfectly with displacer, the strongest defense with the strongest defense. You will also see a lot of Displacer build in this episode, because Displacer is ridiculously strong. It's a main weapon with the damage of a super heavy in a blast 1 radius, and yes, the drawback is tremendous, but it doesn't matter when you can kill a lot of things with one shot, and Missile Rack can combo well with this because it does nearly the same thing with far lower damage. Anyway, second in the list is Morning Greeting from the Local Sun, an extended Displacer Napoleon. Everything about this build is focused on making Displacer better. Crack shot and auto staff to make it even more accurate, nuclear cavalier and walking armory for even more damage and effect, siege stabilizer and external batteries for a 20 range displacer, infiltrator to hide and be sneaky, and finally, stasis barrier and bolt for even more defense. This whole build also won't work without deep well heat sink, which gives resistance to heat as long as you start your turn in danger zone, which means after you start your turn in danger zone, you can stabilize to clear all heat and reload, then overcharge to fire the displacer without being afraid of the heat, even at 4th overcharge cost. Problem is you can't activate nuclear cavalier this way no matter what, and doing that in reverse order might overheat your mech, so nuclear cavalier might not be good in this build. This is in general, how Harrison armory build will be like, you will be playing around with a lot of heat to push out as much damage and effect as possible at a big risk of overheating even with very high heat cap. Third in the list is Tiny Ball of Rage, a Ram Chain Vanguard Napoleon. The Titanomachi, Duelist, and Siege Ram combo is here once again, grappling and ramming down opponent with the aid of synthetic muscle netting and total strength sweet one, shutting down quite a lot of enemies at close range. This Napoleon also has Vanguard Deck Sweeper to shoot anyone that got too close, but it won't work as well when grappling because grapple shuts down reaction and thus overwatch. Stasis generator is also perfect for completely shutting down any opponent because it freezes them in place for a turn. Also, when true black aegis is activated, siege ram still works because you don't need to activate it to use it, and brawler, well, it's the perfect talent to go when the core power is on because improvised attack just got better. Also, this build has reactive weave, which combined with napoleon's trait, make its brace even better, but you can't brace when true black is activated so keep that in mind. Fourth in the list is a good time, Jack. 
A Terashima Ninja Napoleon. Atlas systems work perfectly with most size half and Napoleon is no exception, with Jaeger Kust 1 providing tremendous mobility to the Napoleon, even with true black Aegis on, multi-gear maneuver system and integrated nerve weave do nearly the same job, and with Duelist and Hunter the Terashima and Segment knife in your hands can be quite devastating. And with Brawler and synthetic muscle netting, you can beat the crap out of anything even with true black activated. Also, stasis generator and bold for plenty of defense. Fifth in the list is refunds unnecessary, an infiltrator exemplar Napoleon. What we have here is a Napoleon that's designed to piss everyone off. Rail rifle and thermal pistol means that it can multi-hit targets with a single skirmish, flash charges can blind people, active camo makes this Napoleon even tougher, aiding in infiltrator along with Kai bioplating which let this Napoleon jumps like a madman. Reactive weave lets it runs from any actual danger on brace, and roller grenade means that anyone that successfully catch it gets knocked back to the next map. Also, it has exemplar to force an opponent to focus on it, the perfect talent for Napoleon, but this Napoleon could also turn invisible and hide from the marked enemy, and then fling grenades all over the place because the accuracy debuff on attack does not affect everything else at all, completely dissing on said enemy and the notion of honorable combat, absolutely beautiful. Sixth in the list is he who seeks sight, a vulture infiltrator sniper Napoleon. Basically, you set up a hive drone at a good sniping spot for soft cover and just hide in it to shoot at everyone around you, using infiltrator to make things even worse for the enemy. Stasis barrier works for the same purpose, crack shot and core siphon makes vulture even better, type 3 shield and roller grenade in case anyone got too close, and a prototype weapon in case vulture isn't enough. There's also a major benefit to use Napoleon as a long range attacker, you are so tough that the common problems faced by usual artillery frame simply does not exist with you. Seventh in the list is I'm a thinker, I can break it down, a fade cloak black thumb Napoleon. The funny thing about Napoleon is that you want to get shot, because this mean your allies aren't taking damage. This Napoleon takes it to the next level because getting shot means it can teleport closer to the enemy, and with fade cloak and jump jet from spaceborne 1, any physical obstacle won't be a problem. Hunter logic suite gives this Napoleon ability to stop enemies from coming towards it, and twin variable swords with duelist mean anyone that got too close is in a world of pain. Combined arms and stasis bolt for even more defense, and comp con can be used in conjunction with black thumb to keep the mech running, which is an interesting use of comp con. In fact, black thumb works when true black aegis is on, making Napoleon even tougher. Eighth in the list is tell me you love me, a lich tech Napoleon. Basically, it's a Napoleon full of lich systems, and while its sensor range is short, it can still cause quite a shenanigan with everything in its arsenal. Unhinged chronology and wandering nightmare are the perfect tool to support allies or disrupt the enemies, Didymos can provide a surprising level of mobility and toughness, and this thing has three methods of shutting down enemies. Blink shield to lock everything down, stasis generator and stay of execution to freeze people in place. In fact, since both are quick action, this Napoleon can freeze two people in the same turn, which is ridiculous. And of course, there's lesson of open door to take advantage of all the say being rolled, and hacker for all the heat. The only problem I have with this build is it has no goddamn health, Napoleon is tough, but you should still put some hull points in it anyway. Ninth in the list is fortress delivery system, a teleport taxi Napoleon. Napoleon is very tough, so it's perfectly viable for it to run right in the middle of enemy formation because it's the most likely frame to survive it all. Which mean you can totally use blink space tunneler and have it run as close to the enemy as possible with boost or accelerate and have the entire party crashing by teleporting besides it. FABI mod to boost allies attack, blink charges and accelerate to move things around, leader and bonded to provide even more support, and vanguard shotgun pistol to threaten anything that got too close. The problem with this build, is that you can only smash people gently when using true black aegis, there's nothing that works with that here. But at the same time, you don't exactly need to plan on using your core power in every mission, so it's fine to only use it in utmost emergency. Tenth in the list is the British Grenadier, a grenade spam Napoleon. I am, not even sure what to make of this build, but Harrison Armory does make use of a lot of limited systems and integrated ammo feed provides a lot of extra limited charges. After firing the displacer with walking armory for even more effects, just start throwing grenades or mines everywhere. You have roller, you have breach, you have hex, you even have turret drones to provide even more damage and so much stasis barrier that you can't figure out where to put it all. There's also a prototype weapon, 
just to make use of all the extra limited charges, along with nuclear cavalier for more damage. And finally, there's space horn, so knockback is just extra movement to you. Once again, this thing has no health at all, do not do this please. Eleventh in the list is the silent, a fully core power compatible brawler Napoleon. What I mean by that name is that this Napoleon works practically the same when True Black Aegis is on. Every single system here, all workable with True Black activated. Flight system lets you fly like Superman, Sin Muscle Netting and Brawler makes improvised attack devastating, Siege Ram and Juggernaut makes Ram even better and let you smash through wall, Bulwark mods lets you run over difficult terrain, Mag Clamps let you run along the wall, and Stasis Bold for defense. Heck, this build actually uses universal compatibility, so it fixes everything upon core activation, with a chance to reuse the core again. This Napoleon is terrifying, because not even structure damage will slow it down as its primary damage mean is its own damn fists, and it has so much mobility options that if one fails, it didn't matter. It's truly one horrifying angry midget. Twelfth in the list is Tau Tector, a towable bodyguard Napoleon. So, with Cable Winch, you just attach yourself to an ally so you will always stay with them to protect them, and this thing has a lot of options for defense. Vorpal Gun, Scylla, Stasis Bolt, Stasis Generator, and Mimic Mesh, though the last of which is kinda useless. Siege Specialist, Nuclear Cavalier, and Walking Armory also work well with Vorpal Gun, giving it even more effects on hit. Empathy is also a very good support talent that keeps your allies alive longer. However, this build has some problems, like putting a Cable Winch on an ally will slow them down, but that might not matter at all for some, there's also the fact that this build has lesson of transubstantiation, which is probably the furthest thing you want in this build because it will keep you away from the allies you are trying to protect, but maybe for some other builds, this might works better. Thirteenth in the list is friendly neighborhood battle buddy, a pure support bodyguard Napoleon. Instead of a displacer, this Napoleon has the black spot targeting laser, capable of locking onto enemy on crit. And aside from the usual stasis bolt and barrier, it has multi-gear, support shield, pepcock, and lotus projector, quite a big variety of tools for support, some of which are a bit limited due to Napoleon's short sensor range. Its talents are also pure support type, bonded, grease monkey, exemplar, and leadership. I would put more points in leadership though, leadership is amazing. 14th in the list is, I can't spell that is another pure support bodyguard Napoleon, this one likes to build walls more with stasis barrier, magnetic shield and, well, I guess support shield kinda counts. Stasis bolt is here once again, ferris lash and magnetic cannon can really move everything around, and finally, there's leadership, the best support talent, also there's black thumb and techno file combo in case someone requires some patching. 15th in the list is, not a mem build. I'm not sure if this is the actual name or a warning anyway this is a lucifer displacer napoleon, that makes use of stabilize overcharge skirmish loop again. Essentially, after reaching danger zone in first turn with the firing of displacer, deep well halves all your heat next turn, making stabilize overcharge skirmish loop safe to repeat. Add in lucifer, and displacer could gain 10 bonus damage at minimum, which is ridiculous, add in hellfire round from walking armory, and that bonus damage can be turned into burn. This Napoleon is positively ridiculous, and capable of killing damn near everything in one shot. This build also has Grease Monkey in case you need more Lucifer charges somehow, Crack Shot and Auto Stab for more accuracy, and Engineer 3 for a powerful prototype weapon as backup. 16th in the list is the People's Champion, a Drone Trapper Napoleon. This build is built around trapping people together, using Horo S1 to force people to go where you want or jam them, Dual Tempest Drone with Drone Commander and Puppet Master to trap people, and Blink Shield to recreate the Thunderdome, preferably with some allies inside, and make Napoleon's short sensor range not that annoying to utilize. Nexus weapons with Senti Main could impair enemies very quickly, Gunslinger provides even more damage, and combined arms make those Nexus works even up close. And finally, Lesson of Held Image provides easy access to lock-on at close range. 17th in the list is Persist, another support bodyguard Napoleon. All the gears from Gorgon license are here once again. Orpal Gun, Scorpion, Mimic Mesh, all these systems are very good on protecting a close combat striker, especially those that are vulnerable to tech attack. Exemplar, Bonded, Combined Arms, and Spotter provides even more support, and a combination of Accelerate, Stasis Bolt, and Stasis Barrier could provide even more defense. 
Just as final note, assault rifle is always a reliable weapon no matter the level. 18th in the list is Gravel Strong, a grapple brawler Napoleon. Sin Muscle Netting, Brawler, Juggernaut, Siege Ram, Titanomachi, all these make this Napoleon a rather effective close grapple fighter. A chain sword with thermal charge and brutal is very devastating when it hits and crits, but it's not the main focus of the build. The main focus is all the devastating improvised attack, grapple, and ram it could do while in true black mode, with bulwark mod making it a cakewalk to walk over difficult terrain, and combined arms for soft cover up close. The only systems it can't use in true black is armor lock plating, which is very helpful in making the Napoleon damn near unmovable without true black with brace. Also, there's stasis bolt, but I'm not sure if it will be that useful when this Napoleon is focused on grappling. 19th in the list is Machina, a smokestack displacer Napoleon. I have been reading so many displacer Napoleon builds that either use the massive heat buildup, or just get rid of it with stabilize, that I'm surprised to see one build that just completely extinguishes it. Smokestack could basically absorb any heat generated within its radius immediately, so this Napoleon will rarely have overheat issue. The problem, is that it will immediately explode, but Napoleon can reduce the damage to one on a successful save so it's not that dangerous to it. You can also totally deal with anyone that got too close by essentially using the smokestack to increase your damage, which is fucking hilarious. You also have crack shot for more damage, and forge 2 for emplacement or armor pack, because you could never have enough armor, and omnibus plate for better effect or explosion radius. Spotter, empathy, stasis bolt, blink shield, these are good for support and defense, and finally, nuclear cavalier, for emergency cooldown I guess. 12th in the list is come with me if you want to live, a flying target extraction Napoleon. This is a rather specific build for a rather specific goal, basically, the whole point of this Napoleon is quick target extraction, by going in, shoving the target into an expanded compartment, and get out. All theater movement, singularity motivator, Jaegerkust 1, multi-gear, Croil rifle, ace, infiltrator, skirmisher, hunter, all these provide a ton of mobility to this Napoleon. Stasis generator can stop something in its track, and stable structure keeps it standing. But honestly, it's really easy to modify this Napoleon build for other objective too, all these mobility and utility are always useful. 21st in the list is Baby Faces Blaster, a deck sweeper vanguard Napoleon. Like any other vanguard build, anyone that steps too close gets blasted by a shotgun aided by walking armory. Type 3 shield and stasis bolt keep you safe, stasis generator makes people you don't like stop moving, bulwark mods to keep moving yourself, and a combo of reactive weave and armor lock makes this napoleon have the strongest brace possible. Auto stab light nexus with senti main can debuff enemy quite frequently, and with a single mount, skirmisher will see a lot of uses. Finally, exemplar is always a good talent to use with napoleon, especially one that can dance around, and Siege Ram is useful both in and out of True Black Aegis. 22nd in the list is Warden of the Death Sector, a battlefield controller Napoleon. Caltrip Launcher, Wandering Nightmare, Blink Charges, all these can bring a lot of pain to the enemies, with Accelerate capable of doing both that and moving you and your allies too. Impact Lance combined with Thermal Pistol and Duelist let you hit a lot of targets at once, Nuclear Cavalier and Heat Fall Coolant let you take full advantage of heat, Spaceborne keep you going in the direction you want, and Grease Monkey is helpful in gaining more limited charges. Also there's the usual stasis bolt and barrier pair to use in and out of true black aegis. 23rd in the list is Tri-Gunner, an Athena Artillery Napoleon. So, first thing first, you can either use Kai Bioplating to get to a sniping spot, or hook yourself to an ally with Cable Winch. Either way, it won't be a problem when you use Crackshot to immobilize yourself, and with a single skirmish, you can fire three oracle at the target, which with crackshot and gunslinger, can get quite devastating very quickly. Also there's stasis bolt to keep you safe, a prototype weapon for backup, and of course, Athena to see right through everything. 24th in the list is caveman, full auto gun brawler Napoleon. I have a feeling that I don't need to explain this build at all and people will understand it already. Anyway, this build is built around auto gun, which can be fired as a free action at the end of your turn, what this means is that you can just ignore it completely and use grapple and improvised attack every turn to smash. So you will basically do the same thing as you would when true black aegis is activated. You could even use hunter lock for even more damage. There's one problem with this build however, this pistol, 
it will not fire, because you could only specifically use the bonus auxiliary weapon in the same mount with skirmish or barrage, auto gun attack doesn't count, so that won't work and that makes getting gunslinger dice very difficult. Honestly I'm not really sure what to do in this case, since it's not like there's an auxiliary weapon that fires automatically. It's still gonna works with overwatch though, but in that case, the auto gun can't fire. And that's, half of the builds reviewed in this episode. Once again, before showing off the other half of the builds my viewers have submitted, let me reveal the next topic of the series. I can already see the amount of shenanigans happening with this one. Anyway, big shout out to all my viewers out there that have submitted their amazing builds for this episode, and with everything done, I will see you all next time. Now roll in the rest. <laughs>